What's up, everybody? This is the War Room at night, baby. Ha <laughs> ha, we back for another edition of the War Room. Rumors and headlines for this week in pro wrestling. And of course, I am your host, MFGDs. And before we get started, before we get started with all the talking points, I want to take this time to shout out my guys, the Young Lion, Ty Fulton, and my guy, my brother. PD stunt. Without them, none of this would be possible, and they may not be here on this episode, but they're with us in our hearts. Let's talk about another one of my brothers, Mr. Andrew Mott, over at the League FFB, and we're going to talk about Let's Talk Dynasty, where we get you ready to win those Dynasty Championships. So if you want to try to put something together and make a title run, this is the time of the year. Trade deadline's coming up, and you want to make some moves, you better tune in. All right. <laughs> now let's talk about for what we're all here for. Let's talk about these fun rumors in professional wrestling this week. We're going to kick it off. With uh, something that we touched on last week, and that is the power struggle taking place in upper management in the World Wrestling Entertainment. I was about to say World Wrestling Federation, but we're going to go with WWE. Let's just say that. Well, apparently, according to Sports Illustrated, Ariel Emanuel, you know, head honcho at TKO, believes that people in his organization should perform in the roles they're assigned. Well, why is that important? Because Triple H was assigned to be the head of creative. That means that uh, this man that we've come to know, love, and sometimes hate, Vincent Kennedy McMahon, no more sitting in gorilla position, no more changing shit at the last second, no more... Yelling at guys, they come through the curtain. You know, all the stuff that we heard Vince does, you know, including growing a very horrible mustache, might I say. Um, Triple H has been handed the keys, just like we said. He's been knighted. They Sir Triple H, Sir Triple H, um, and now he's in charge of creative. And that takes us to our next bit of news. According to Dave Meltzer, Vince is out of creative altogether. What I just touched on, we're no no more Vince. I don't know how long this is going to last. I don't know how this whole thing is going to play out. But I do know that it appears as of right now, as of October 22nd, 2023, that Vince McMahon is not a part of creative. All right. That's good news. <laughs> I mean, I think uh doesn't tell you, uh, as the Rock on Santa blind Stevie Wonder could tell you that WWE television is better when Vince ain't changing shit sporadically and out of nowhere at the last minute and naming guys Shorty G and just all kinds of other crap. Um, still got Butch though. Wish that um, wish that we could change that, but I won't get too greedy. I'll just I'll let it rock. I'll let it rock. Um, following up with the uh, news regarding Vince and Triple H, another report came out by Fightful Select saying that you can see that there's been a seismic change due to the way the shows are ran now. Unused talent returning to TV, 
cameos, more women on television, and longer matches and less restrictions. All signs of no vents. Because for those of us who's for those of us who've been watching this thing for far too long, we know what the customary Vince McMahon things are. We know that you're gonna barely see women, and if you do see women, you're gonna see them for a couple minutes. And you're gonna then they're gonna be gone. If you see a match, it's gonna be probably some big dude going over a smaller dude, and a match that's like less than two minutes. And you know that um you're gonna see anybody who's short who just doesn't fit what Vince sees as uh as his type. You're not gonna see them very often, so. Those are the things that we've come accustomed to, grown accustomed to, when it comes to Vince McMahon. So there's that. Next, we have another report, and I hope that uh, there's not fire where there's smoke about Raw moving for Monday nights. It's a horribly, horribly shitty idea. Please. Please, for the love of God, don't move raw for Monday nights. We are all used to it. That's what we're used to. We don't want that to change. What night are you going to move it to? Tuesday? Wednesday? Th just leave it alone. It's good where it is. You, you're scared to compete against Monday night football, so what? Football has an offseason. In offseason, you don't got to worry about it. But for those weeks, just get what ratings you can get and just leave it the hell alone. According to Wrestle Votes, people backstage agree with me. They agree with me that they don't want Monday nights to not have Raw anymore. They want to stay just where it is because that's what we've become accustomed to. We don't want to see Raw change nights. I'm sorry. If anybody disagrees with that, just leave it in the comments below. Um, but I hope that uh, you don't comment below because we shouldn't be trying to move Mon Raw for Monday nights, people. Come on. Next bit of news. Remember last week when I said that we're getting ready to do a whole thing with, you know, the Wyatt Six and Bo Dallas is going to come back. It's going to be Uncle Howdy. And, well, apparently Bo Dallas is not returning. Is not returning to WWE, and he was only there as a favor to the late, great Bray Wyatt. And that's according to Dave Meltzer. Um, I have mixed feelings about this. I know Bo made some mistakes when he was with WWE, did some stuff in the airport, some very Matt Riddle-esque things in the airport. Um he was drinking at the airport. Um, no, he wasn't really. He was kind of over with the fans, to be honest. Like, the B team, bowl leave. Um, but that's not why I have mixed feelings about it. Like, at the end of the day, I could kind of care less about Bo Dallas in WWE. But I really kind of was starting to like the idea of the Wyatt Six being in the WWE. I at least wanted to see it play out. First of all, I want to see Bray's vision, even though he won't be here to oversee it or to see it. I'm, I'm not ready to let Bray Wyatt go, if that makes sense. Um, I feel like there was so much left for him to leave the wrestling industry, and I would love to just see some part of him carry on in some capacity, and I was hoping that this was going to be it. But um, it looks like it might not be in the cards, and um, that does kind of suck. I'm not going to lie to you. Our next story is about WWE tampering. And this, again, is from Fightful Select, saying that WWE – tampered with Swerve Strickland, which a lot of us have already heard. But they're also saying that they tampered with William Regal, and um, apparently it happened while Tony Khan's mother was hospitalized, and this serves as the basis for Tony Khan's 
aggressive behavior towards WWE. Cut the shit. Just cut the shit. Tampering, while it may have played somewhat of a role in why Tony Khan is upset with WWE, it was reported a long while back that the reason Tony Khan is upset is because he tried to open a forbidden door and reach out to Triple H and Stephen McMahon and they gave him a cold shoulder and he felt some kind of way because WWE, because he allowed WWE to feature the big show, Chris Jericho, you know, former WWE performers who are now in AEW, he allowed them to make cameos on Monday Night Raw. I think it was, I think they were celebrating, correct me if I'm wrong, I want to say they were celebrating John Cena. He allowed them to appear on the Titan Tron and, you know, say stuff about Cena uh, or whoever they were honoring that day. They honored a few people recently, so it slips my mind. But he let that happen, but then I guess when Tony Khan came back like, hey, we're buddies now. Hey, why don't we do this? Uh, they kind of sent him and left him on red. So uh, that's when Tony Khan started talking all that shit. So for Tony Khan and whoever to now, two a year and a half, two years later, to say, you know what? You know what really pissed me off and why I'm going after WWE? It's because they tampered. They tampered with us. They tampered with me. No. You feel salty, Tony. You're salty. Just 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 admit that you you're salty. It ain't got nothing to do with the tamper. Yeah, the tamper and piss you off, but you were already pissed off at WWE. You were already having guys or approving guys to come on AEW television and take shots at WWE and, you know, every single show, every single show. It's calmed down a little bit now. It's calmed down a little bit. But for those of us that were around in those early, those dog days of AEW, where AEW was good, where AEW was awesome, was can't miss television. And this was this was the reason why I was can't miss television. But you had guys going on Dynamite every single week saying something about WWE. Either it was a slick joke, a slick reference, you know, um, or just outright mentioning it. I mean, the only person that I don't mind hearing shit from mentioning WWE is MJF. And that's because nine out of ten times when MJF talks about WWE in the AEW ring, he's 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 not taking shots. He's just he's talking shit and he's using it within the context of a storyline that he's playing in regards to his free agency. He's not guys coming out and, you know, saying like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, you're just like that uh, guy over there in Connecticut. You're a creepy old man. Like, you know, just saying stupid shit like that. I mean, and that's kind of, but you know what? In the early days of AEW, I accepted that because AEW was awesome two years or so ago. AEW was awesome back then. Now it's kind of just like, it's okay, but we weren't looking for okay. We wanted a real alternative to WWE and Tony Khan's letting us down and he's too focused on talking shit about WWE instead of fixing the in-house problems that he has. And there's many of them. There's many. So we're going to jump over to our next bit of news. War Games teased. Now, we knew Survivor Series was coming up. We knew it was coming up. You know, but a lot of people questioned that um, whether or not War Games was coming back. Well, according to Fightful Select, the backstage segment between Nick Aldis, Jay Uso, and Adam Pierce was a way to start setting up the War Games. And I'm very interested to see how that's going to play out. Um, War Games is awesome, but you got to have a storyline that makes sense. Last year made sense. 
everybody needed to band up to go against the bloodline. That made sense. So they have some work to do to make it make sense before Survivor Series. Because, I mean, what are we going to do? Judgment Day? Like, what's going on? So um, I'm excited if we're going to have war games. I'm excited. Um, Let's hope that they do it right. Our next news is none other than about the man himself, Phil Brooks, CM Punk. Apparently, according to Dave Meltzer, CM Punk and AEW are still negotiating his contract buyout. Um, there's not too much more to add to that. Um, I imagine, and I think Meltzer touched on this, I imagine that what they might be discussing is um, no compete clauses, like when Punk will be able to wrestle elsewhere, things like that. But um, for all intents and purposes, yes, CM Punk is completely done with um, AEW, and now he's just trying to see how much he's going to get paid for um, his time there. The next story we have, is about Edge. Now, I didn't hear this during the week, but apparently there was some news that um, Edge was upset with AEW because of the promo between he and Ricky Starks. I think that occurred on not this past episode of Collision, but the week before. You know, the promo where uh, Edge was calling him the rock ripoff and this, that, and the third. Well, apparently, according to Fight for Select, Edge wasn't Edge not even mad at AEW. Apparently, it's just it's just a bunch of rumors and things like that. Um, Edge is not upset. Edge is happy. Ricky didn't have a problem with what Edge said. Edge didn't have a problem with what Ricky said, and everything's all copacetic. They love him backstage uh, in AEW. So, yeah, I mean, that's a bit of non-news, to be honest. Um, Edge ain't mad. Newsflash. Our last bit of news for the day, then we're going to close things out and wrap it up, is about the John Cena run ending. And according to Fightful Select, John Cena run is going to end here very soon. Um, They said he's going to be on... An episode of SmackDown is going to be a crown jewel, and it's kind of just up in the air. I think they said he might be on a couple more SmackDowns or something like that. But according to the man himself, John Cena, he ain't going nowhere. He posted the scene from the Wolf of Wall Street saying he's not fucking leaving. And you know what? I'm the type of person, I take it from the horse's mouth. If John Cena says he's not going nowhere, then for now, John Cena's not going nowhere. I mean, he could have been talking about, you know, next week, next week. So you never know. We all know that this is all tied in to the um, what's going on with the strike with the screen actors. We know that once that comes to pass, that John Cena will return to filming. I think he might have been filming Peacemaker or something like that. Um, it's going to go back to doing that fun stuff, and then that's going to be it. All right, so that's going to be our episode of the war room for this week. Um, if you're watching, I'm glad you joined me. Please, please, please like, subscribe, follow, turn on your notifications, it helps us with the algorithm, and we're trying to just Get this Crimson Mask army up and running. And we can't do it without you. So please join us. Follow us on Instagram, X, Twitter, whatever we're going to call it. Um, TikTok, follow us everywhere. Support us. Soon we're plan- we're planning on putting the names of our new subscribers down at the bottom for our two shows, which will be Fire Man and Trash in the War Room. We're thinking about putting your name down there, scrolling across the bottom if you're a new subscriber. And um, just to show you that we appreciate you as much as you appreciate us. So, again, I am MFGDs, and this is it for Crimson Mask in the War Room. 
We'll see you guys next week.